What's up ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this POV review by Autotop and L. My name is Max and wow, here we are guys. 12 years almost after Martijn and I started filming cars and having fun putting them on YouTube. We have now arrived at the Porsche Carrera GT. So this is, well, the ultimate car for a lot of people. And it was for us back in the day as well. I mean, this is basically the start of the hypercar era, if you think about it. This is the ultimate Porsche race car technology, race car underneath the skin, and a massively powerful racing derived V10 in the rear as well. It is one of the most legendary cars ever made if you ask me and i am insanely happy over the moon that we are able to make a review for you guys of this car now i'll start by saying thank you to lce performance and daniel the owner in particular for allowing us to drive this car it is a massive honor and i am so grateful that uh, we are able to do this we are able to offer you guys this experience because that is what this channel is all about we try to convey the experience of driving these cars as purely and as directly as possible that is our creed and well the fact that daniel has agreed to let us drive this car is amazing Thank you, Daniel. So today I'm going to show you around it. We're going to talk a lot about the development and about all the stuff underneath the car. Uh, it will be a long review, I think. And then we'll take it for a drive towards the Autobahn for an Autobahn blast. All right, so the Carrera GT was built between 2004 and 2006. Uh, 1,270 of these were made. They were planning on making 1,500 of them, but because the airbag laws changed in the US, they they just stopped producing them in 2006. Um, a little backstory. So this engine that's in this car was developed in the early 90s for the Footwork F1 team, uh, 92. And uh, that project didn't go through. Uh, they had this engine sitting on the shelf. Nothing happened with it. Then late 90s, uh, they threw it in an LMP1 Le Mans car, a prototype racer. It was five and a half liters back then. They did two tests with it and then they stopped because they needed everything and everyone to work on the Porsche Cayenne, which they thought was going to make them a lot of money, which it did. A couple of years later in 2000, uh, on the, at the Paris Motor Show, the Carrera GT concept debuted and it had that five and a half liter V10 in the rear. And it looked pretty much like this car. Um, they said back then, if we get 500 orders and the response is good, then we will build it. Well, they got 500 orders, the response was amazing, and they started building it. They also made a, a few bucks with the KN uh, at that time, so they started building it. And I mean, that's an amazing story, especially the development of that engine. In the production version, it has a 5.7 liter, so 5.5 to 5.7, 612 horsepower. Now, the car itself, is a true hypercar. It is a roadster. I'll show you the roof panels a bit later on. It is a roadster and it is built for maximum driving pleasure and also to be the last true analog supercar. Um, it only has traction control, no stability control, manual gearbox, rear wheel drive. It can be a twitchy and treacherous car if you don't have respect for it. And uh, it is absolutely amazing. So, as always, let's start at the front. We'll start at the wheels because these forged magnesium wheels, super light. That's a theme on this car, lightweight everything. Magnesium wheels with center locks. Uh, you can see the blue color on the right side and they are red on the left side. So you know which tire goes where because the thread is left and right. 265 wheel, 19 inch. And behind that we've got uh, carbon ceramic brakes. Really powerful brakes absolutely awesome and we've got the michelin pilot super sport tires these tires are from 2018 uh, which is great because apparently the tires this car came on were quite uh tricky and they could let go you know without warning and that's why it was so dangerous to drive back then uh, this should be a lot better but wow look at that and then in the background we've got our ferrari 599 support car i mean honestly i'm I'm going to take a freaking picture of this. 
I have a Carrera GT and then I've got the 599. Oh my God. How is this my life? This is a beautiful side profile and that is because the car is mid-engined of course. Because you have that engine here, you have this long rear and you have this relatively long front as well and then the cabin right in the center. Absolutely gorgeous, big air intake right there. This is all open as well as you can see to let out air of the wheel well. Then at the rear we've got massive 335 section tires, 20 inch wheels, so staggered wheels and carbon ceramics as well and then at the rear well we've got such a good view we have raised the wing which uh, raises at like 75 miles an hour uh, automatically and carbon fiber diffuser and exhaust it, it all looks so freaking racy this actually looks like a freaking jet booster on a on a jet fighter really cool and then we've got this diffuser down here carbon fiber which is straight from the 911 GT1 car from 98, which actually won at Le Mans. Um, so is the suspension, by the way. So there is a lot of race car technology in this car. It is absolutely insane. Okay, open rear and front. Now, let's check out the engine. The 5.7 liter V10. I've told you the story. It is a freaking F1 engine. This engine was developed for F1 and that is so awesome. This is probably the closest you can get to an F1 car for the street. Um, we've got a dry sump system and well, as you can see, it is a relatively compact package. You can see the gearbox sitting behind the engine here. Um, now the clutch on this car is notoriously difficult to operate and I have to admit that I did stall it twice. Um, which is not a great thing to do, but I guess it, it's part of the Carrera GT experience. And uh, <laughs> I just have to live with the fact that I stalled it twice. But the problem is that there is an anti-stall in the car. So you're supposed to operate the clutch when you drive off from a standstill. And then the car, the ECU, will uh, give it a little rev. So, you know, you drive off. But I don't think that was happening. So. I think that's why uh, I stalled it. <laughs> Race, racing driver excuses. Um, but that's the case. So the engine revs itself automatically so you can drive off smoothly. And um, that clutch is so difficult to operate because it's a ceramic race clutch, basically. It's the first time this was fitted to a car. Normal clutches have one friction plate. This has four. Uh, it's a super small clutch. It's like two thirds of a 911 turbo clutch. And this has been done to save weight and space, which means that the engine can sit lower. That's also why it has a dry sump system, or one of the reasons why it has it. The engine can sit lower, the center of gravity is lower, and you get just a better handling car. And uh, that's the dedication that went into this car. Now, as you can see, we've got a carbon fiber subframe here, which is bolted to the rear bulkhead. And we've got a carbon fiber monocoque chassis as well. So it is basically a race car. You can see the inboard pushrod suspension here. H&R springs, Sox dampers, and this of course means that you have a lot less unsprung weight and it's also easier to adjust, uh, but it saves a lot of unsprung weight as well. But this is beautiful, one of the most gorgeous engine compartments I've ever seen. Legendary. All right. Man, what a car. Okay, so uh, the interior, I'll show you guys that first and then after that we'll put on the roof panels. Now, you can see the carbon monocoque here, the carbon tub with these, with these very wide sills with Carrera GT on there. And on the inside, oh, we've got these bucket seats which are actually pretty, pretty good. They're pretty comfy, you can sit nice and low. Um, we've got this center stack here with carbon fiber down here all covered in leather and of course the beautiful gear lever shift knob beech wood to save weight um, this is a, a nod to the 917 race car uh, back in the day they they struggled to save weight on those cars uh, and they actually ended up using wooden gear levers now you can also see down here on this carbon fiber part here 
uh, there's a little space here and this clamp is here mounted on top which fits custom luggage which is really cool you can also fit a bag behind the passenger seat um, you can fit a bag in the front of course and then we've got a special one i'll show you later on beautiful doors um, there's a lot of like magnesium carbon fiber aluminium in this car and it all looks amazing absolutely gorgeous super basic steering wheel i love it so much it really is an analog supercar Man, I can't believe this is happening. Okay, so the special storage I wanted to show you is this. And it even comes with a little pouch where you can fit, I don't know, what does that fit? A bag full of coins. Looks a bit like a, an old school Robin Hood thing or something like that, but there is a little storage in there because there is not a lot. So they decided to use every bit they could. Um, okay, so. We have to put the seats forward a little bit so we can reach the roof panel. All right, so. There we have the roof panels. Now, this is all carbon, I think, yeah. Um, this is how you're supposed to fit the roof panels. They weigh like two kilos each. And you have these special straps to cover them to make sure that they're in the right position and then there's a little sliding plastic cover there and you put the roof panel on like that and then close it inside the car and that is on awesome so the trunk is actually so light that it, this little bit of wind closed it. Okay, second one. Beautifully made, by the way, with this diamond stitch. And then underneath here is all the vehicle information with the options as well written on there. But wow, that is gorgeous. And of course the wheel lug for the center lock wheels. Aluminium. Gorgeous. Close that up and we'll get in. Look at those pedals as well. That is gorgeous. All right, so you can see in here now the panels are installed. You can see the beautiful carbon fiber exposed and again that quilted fabric to protect them and to protect your head. Uh, yeah, okay, so let's start it up. Oh man, alrighty, and we'll take it for a little drive towards the autobahn. Close the windows. Now, this car is silver, as you've seen. And uh, this is one of five colors, so silver, gray, yellow red and black were the five colors silver and gray by far the most chosen ones silver is the biggest portion uh, as i said 1270 were built i think almost half of them went to the us they're still super popular over there um, but for example a, a red one a guards red carrera gt they only made eight of those so yeah uh, the color is a really big factor in uh, the price of this car. And uh, I mean, they are super expensive. They're doing like a million dollars right now. And a lot of that depends on that color and on the mileage and stuff, of course. But there are also a couple of ones that have been painted to sample. So they, the customers can choose a different color and they are incredibly expensive. This car is for sale, by the way, uh, or well, it is for the right offer. So if you're interested, this is a US car um, and it is for sale by the owner, LCE Performance. Okay. Oh, 
I just saw that rear wing go up in my mirror. That is so awesome. It's a little bit dirty here, so I'm taking it easy. But driving this car is so special. Um, the car feels super manageable. So the size is awesome. It's light to drive, so the steering is light, the clutch is relatively light. Once you get used to it, it's not a difficult car to drive. It's not intimidating, unless... I mean, that is a lot of power and speed. Oh my god, and it doesn't have traction control. Or it does have traction control, it doesn't have stability control. Okay, windows down. Oh! Tell me that doesn't sound like a Formula One car. Holy moly. Oh man, I can't believe this is happening. I, I honestly, I never thought this day would come. You can hear the traction control limiting the power. I'm not going to turn that off. So 612 horsepower behind me, 590 newton meters of torque. Um, Walter Röhl was the uh, development driver for this car and apparently uh, it used to have even more power but they thought that it was a bit too much so uh, the production car ended up with 612 which is still you know a lot. It weighs around 1380 kilos. Trying to keep the car rolling there we go 1380 kilos some, somewhere around that wet so it's not super heavy of course, that's down to the carbon fiber. Oh, carbon fiber, monocoque and everything. Oh my God, this is amazing. So we're at the Autobahn. Zero to 100, this car, three and a half seconds, 3.7, something around that. There are a few numbers floating around. Top speed, 330 kilometers an hour. Let's find out. So you can hear. is mounted on uh, ball bearings so it, it doesn't have rubber uh, which means that the car responds super well and is really direct what are you doing man go 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 back to the Netherlands idiot so visibility is really really good actually I wasn't expecting that something to you it, it 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 stirs you it moves you and it is a very emotional car the experience is very emotional and and I think that with modern supercars hypercars 
emotion might be something that has disappeared a little bit, you know? It's all about the numbers, the performance, getting the power down, hybrid drivetrains, efficiency. And I'm, I know that it is all better than this and uh, whatever, but this, this might never be topped, you know? This might never be improved on. Oh my God, I can't see anything. Okay, windows down. <laughs> oh. oh man. I don't think I've ever been this happy and scared and intimidated at the same time. My, my inner child is screaming at me, Max, you're driving a Carrera GT, finally! And my grandpa Max inside me is telling me, please be careful. Okay, this is the last pool probably ever for me in a Carrera GT. is just so buttery smooth and then you've got that manual linked to it that feels absolutely amazing it is the driving experience of my life and it is probably my favorite car ever well i don't know i have a lot of favorite cars these days because the cars we get to drive are getting crazier and crazier and i don't know where this will end but this has been amazing thank you so much lc performance for allowing us to drive this car, for trusting us with it, for transporting it here. It has been the honor of a lifetime and uh, well, thank you so much. To you guys, thank you for watching as always. Thank you for making it possible um, because you guys are with so many now, we get to do these crazy things and uh, I owe everything to you. My loyal and lovely subscribers i absolutely love you thank you for watching hope to see you at the next one you can subscribe by clicking the big button in the middle you can also check out this video on the right or go check out this playlist on the left okay that's it for the carrera gt that's for sticking around to the end thank you see you next time bye